y'all. Welcome back. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a brand new intro uh, to my videos, and that's courtesy of my good friend, Trey McIntyre. So, thanks, Trey, for that. And last um, video, we started this work on panoramas or a panoramic composition, and that's uh, inspired by my student, Elise. Olson and her panorama that she did and she posted on our Facebook group. So big thanks to Trey and Elise. I just wanted to make sure and do that before we got into the, the meat of this. So at this point, um, three days later, we're, I mean, it took three days, right? Mm -hmm. Three days later, we're both done with our panoramas. I still want to tweak mine a little bit, but she is done and it's really nice. It's, uh, you know, she's got all her details in there of winter, spring, summer, and fall. Check out that pile of leaves. I love it. Um, I think that's really cool. But the tricky thing about panoramas is, what was the question you asked me, G? How are you going to fit this in a frame, or do you have a frame long enough? Right, so she asked me, right when she was done, do you have a frame long enough? And I was like, well, we would have to get a frame, custom frame made. So this is the issue with panoramic compositions and or, you know, long, whether they're vertical or horizontal, long compositions. And for the most part, these types of compositions were used, and I think I mentioned it um, last video by map makers or cartographers. They were also used by storytellers as a way to kind of tell a story and be able to illustrate it as you go along. So um, my mom went to China and she went to this incredible dirt market outside of Beijing and she got a, an amazing scroll and it really does tell the story. Um, as you go along the scroll and as you unroll it. So today, I'm gonna show you how you could make a scroll, you know, make your panoramic image into a scroll. And um, if you have, you know, teepee roll, or even better yet, a paper towel roll, that's a good size. I was like digging through my pile of recycled stuff and look what I found. This awesome, this is from, um, gift wrapping paper. So the first step is to kind of line up your your work on this edge and then you're gonna just make a mark here. Gee, you wanna line that up and make the mark? You're gonna make a mark at the edge of, wait, let me make sure this is right to the edge. There we go, kid. Make a mark right there. Very good. Okay, we're gonna make, we're gonna cut two of these. So we're gonna measure back up to this mark, Gia. Make another mark right there. Great. If your parents want to cut, you know, your piece for you, they can. Otherwise, you just need to use a pair of old paper scissors and you kind of have to just kind of go for it. You want to do it? Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, cut it. Yeah. Okay, so you can just cut it. Um, the other thing that happens too, when you're making a scroll, yeah, just keep going, there you go. Cut it like you mean it. Be careful not to tear it too much. That's all right. We can fix that. Cut that one. Be a little bit more gentle on the cut on the back end. Okay, so right then and there, I've got to reckon, realize something. As you're cutting, be really careful on the back end to just cut your way slowly through it so that you don't tear the end of the tube. It's okay if you kind of crush it a little bit, but you just don't want to tear it. So just keep working forward with it. All right, so if you have a narrower piece, you could use a, a teepee tube, but we also have another tube that we can do, another way of doing this after I show you this method um, on Gia's. So now you flip this over, and this is the part that's kind of like backwards forwards thinking. So you lay the tube right next to this um, paper, I'm gonna do it kind of um, idiot method because I can never pull out the exact amount that I want. I'm using clear tape just because I realized, oh my gosh, I should have used clear tape last time. But you could use decorative, decorative like washi tape could be cool. So you're gonna tape it on there. And then gee, I'm gonna let you tape the other side. Okay. All right, so same thing on that side. 
Okay. So remember, you want to lay it over this. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Lay it over that. Awesome. You can get your little pieces of tape. Um, got it? Yeah, not too long. I'll hold this for you. Can you tear it? Yep. Yeah, pull it like you mean it. There you go. Okay. That it. That's kind of straight, I believe. Nice. Go right to that edge. Good. Very good. Now you can cut another little piece. Good. Nice. Doesn't matter if it's if it's longer, it's totally fine. Just line up that, that edge right at that tip right up here. Yeah. There you go. Line up the edge of the tip up here. There you go. So really line it up. Yeah, you got it. Perfect, perfect, that's perfect. Okay, so once you have this tape down on either side of your scrolls, you can then roll your piece together. And then you really have kind of like a, a scroll where you could, you know, open it out. Say if you had a central image that spreads out, you could open it this way. Or Gia's has a direction this way so on that here's the thing with that you fold back over wait am i doing it right oh no you go this way <laughs> sorry you roll this way all the way over it takes a little hot minute because you have to think about how you're going to tell the story okay like that so you meet this this end of the roll and then as you're talking i'm going to do the reverse so you could start with this part you know telling the snow scene and you could move on and just whoops go kind of continuously to tell your story so that's that method just to kind of illustrate it all right so I'll show you guys what I did so you want to roll up your scroll yep um, I finished mine and I ended up, um, you know, since it's the life cycle of the butterfly, I ended up stitching a lot of my details. So I just thought I'm a, I'm a dyer stitcher and I'm more comfortable working with like fabric paint or dyes. So I dyed the background. I added a little bit of color with fabric paint and then the rest of the color was the stamped leaves that I did, like our project, and then I stitched into it with thread. So you can do your panorama with whatever medium you want. Um, there's examples of tile panoramas, um, oil paintings. Of course, we had colored pencil. That's what Gia worked in. So this is fabric paint, um, stamped leaves, and thread. On this one, I'll show you another way to make the scroll, and this is kind of tricky, inspired by the great George. It's George's idea. So, you know those to-go chopsticks? This is the perfect use for them. Look, we are not going to break them apart, but see how it makes this little space right here? There it is, that little space. We are just going to just jam this right in here into this space. We're just jamming that right down there. Easy peasy. It's even, it even kind of gets kind of tight at the bottom. Whoa, look at that. That is really working kind of semi good. Okay, for this end that's kind of loose, this would need to be taped. So I'm just going to use this um, bright uh, yellow tape that I like to kind of tape this. Ooh, let me get that back in there. Tape around this to get it kind of tight around there to be like a stopper, okay? Just tape around that, it's so hard to, there we go. Is that right? Yeah, get it tight. Okay, yeah, that's holding it. Look at that. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this end, just like Chia's. Same deal, that can go in recycling. Okay, jamming this thing in here, right? Can you jam that in there? Yeah, jam it all the way in there. Um, slide that down. You kind of have to open this a little bit and jam it down there. Okay, that was pretty good. Nice, nice. All right, you wanna tape off a little piece of this yeah. tape? I'm gonna try to get it way down in there just because I'm that girl. Okay, there. All right, so this one's really jammed down in there. She is gonna tape around the tip really tight. And I'll show you this example. 
yeah just go around so you want to start on this little yeah yeah go yeah. around get there get there then wrap it around yeah right yeah yeah so that's why you got to cut a little bit longer because <laughs> it when it meets it goes exactly all right let me just tape over because that's what makes it tight when you wrap around okay there you go so you don't want to put it dead in the middle all right so once you've taped around that there you go you've got your pieces it's being held and then on this one same deal since this is sequential I'll try to do that oh gee roll that for me will you you get it yeah just keep rolling it on there okay roll it up Wow, so this could like, imagine if you were like a traveling science teacher, you could have this life cycle of the butterfly. Like this could fit in your purse or your pocket. I mean, that's kind of cool if you think about it. Especially people who like wear cargo pants. Yeah, this is perfect for people that wear cargo pants. I agree. It's a really good, oh, look at here's some loose threads. I'm just gonna trim it. Okay, so. So I could be teaching and saying, well, the first part of the life cycle of the butterfly, um, that's the eggs. So there would be little eggs on leaves. Then those eggs would turn into caterpillars that are hungry, that want to eat a bunch of leaves. So as the caterpillar eats leaves, it gets big and fat and decides it wants to take a nap. <laughs> then it makes its chrysalis. It relaxes and takes a nice long nap in its chrysalis. And then one day it breaks free. It decides it wants to wake up and it's transformed into a young butterfly. It's got to wait, let its wings dry. And then once its wings are dry, it flies away. So this is how you can use a panorama to tell a story or, or educate somebody or um, teach somebody about something or show somebody a city, you know? So I hope this helps and it's given you some good ideas of what you can do with your panoramas if you don't have a super long frame or a gigantic room to leave them in. What do you think, G? Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, see you later. Bye.